is Tuesday, January 26. Welcome to CGN News. Commanding Officer of the Clarendon Police in Jamaica, Senior Superintendent Glenford Miller, says an intelligence-based operation involving a house-to-house -house search in Rocky Point, Clarendon, continues. Miller told the Gleaner that the objective is to locate the occupants of the 12-seater plane that crash-landed on the White Sand Beach in the parish Saturday evening. He lamented that information on the contents of the aircraft, why it landed in the fishing village, and its occupants remain an, an unsolved puzzle. Superintendent Christopher Phillips, who has oversight of operations at the Maypen police station, said the residents reported seeing two men who appeared Caucasian being assisted from the aircraft. The occupants and their cargo vanished before the police reached the scene. There is a new source of anxiety regarding the COVAX facility on which many Caribbean countries are depending on for COVID-19 vaccines. The latest issue to emerge is that the vaccine coalition is short of money needed to meet its objectives. NBC is reporting that Gian Gandhi, COVAX coordinator for UNICEF, has disclosed that the total cost is expected to reach up to 17 billion US dollars but the coalition has only $2 billion in hand. Additionally, COVAX is yet to receive even a single dose of a coronavirus vaccine. RGR News reports that COVAX may announce later this week an order from Pfizer and Moderna, but the costs of their vaccines were at one point three times the price per dose for which COVAX had budgeted. Trinidad's Minister of Foreign and CARICOM Affairs, Dr. Amory Brown, has called for a peaceful resolution to the dispute between Guyana and Venezuela over the detention of two Guyanese fishing boats and crew. Brown reportedly met with the Venezuelan ambassador, Carlos Perez Silva, on the matter. He invited the diplomat to meet given Trinidad's chairmanship of the Conference of Heads of Government of CARICOM, the Guyana government said two fishing vessels were operating within Guyana's exclusive economic zone when a Venezuelan naval vessel intercepted them on January 21. The boat's captains were instructed to chart a course to Port Guerrilla, Venezuela, where they have been detained. The police in Jamaica say a major investigation has been launched across several divisions into the attack on six homeless men between late Sunday night and early Monday morning. Four of the men are dead while two are nursing chop wounds at hospital. The incidents took place in downtown Kingston, Spanish Town Road and Halfway Tree in St. Andrew. The police suspect the killings of four homeless men were coordinated and they are pursuing several leads. The U.S. House of Representatives has presented its article of impeachment against Donald Trump to the Senate a step that formally sets in motion the Senate trial against the former United States president. Walking from one side of the U.S. Capitol to the other, nine House managers appointed by Speaker Nancy Pelosi hand-delivered the impeachment document to the Senate on Monday evening. The article charged Trump with incitement of insurrection in relation to the deadly storming on January 6th of the U.S. Capitol building in Washington, D.C., by a mob of his supporters. The House impeached Trump on January 13 on the same charge, making him the first president in U.S. history to be impeached twice. Latin America's richest man, Carlos Slim, has tested positive for COVID-19. The 80-year-old Mexican telecommunications billionaire was only showing, quote, light symptoms and was doing very well, his son wrote in a tweet. It comes a day after Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador, 67, also contracted the disease. Slim and his family, who controls Mexico's largest telecoms provider, America Mobile, are worth an estimated $52 billion, according to Forbes magazine's list in 2020. Mexico is among the world's worst hit nations, with more than 1.7 million confirmed cases since the pandemic began and over 150,000 deaths. Thousands of Brazilians took to the streets for a second day on Sunday to call for the impeachment of President Jair Bolsonaro. 
Bolsonaro is under fire for his government's response to rampant cases of COVID-19, which has claimed more than 216,000 lives in the country. Horn-honking cars paraded through the streets of Rio de Janeiro and a dozen other cities as some protesters shouted, Get out, Bolsonaro! Sunday's protests were called by conservative groups that had once backed the president. Bolsonaro has faced renewed criticism for delays in launching Brazil's immunization campaign. The president has long resisted lockdown measures, arguing economic damage would be worse than the disease. Florida's chief financial officer on Monday told the International Olympic Committee that the state would be happy to host the Olympic Games amid speculation that current hosts, Japan, may back out. Jimmy Patronis sent a letter to Thomas Bach, the head of the IOC, to, quote, encourage you to consider relocating the 2021 Olympics from Tokyo, Japan, to the United States of America, and more specifically to Florida, end quote. The letter, signed by Patronis and posted online, cited the supposed strength of the state's vaccination rollout, its economic reopening, and sports events it has hosted during the pandemic. It also stated that the theme parks, including Disney World, are open for business. Protesters defying a curfew in the Netherlands have clashed with riot police in a third night of unrest. More than 180 people were arrested on Monday in several cities. In Rotterdam, police fired a warning shot and tear gas after an emergency order issued by the mayor failed to move demonstrators. Riots started at the weekend as protesters kicked back against newly imposed coronavirus restrictions, the BBC reports. The Netherlands has had nearly one million confirmed COVID cases since the start of the outbreak. The government recently introduced a nighttime curfew and anyone caught violating it faces a 84 pound fine. Prime Minister Mark Rutte has condemned what he called criminal violence and police say it is the worst unrest in 40 years. Russian President Vladimir Putin says a palace featured in a video by his arch critic Alexei Navalny doesn't belong to him. The video called Putin's Palace went viral on Russian social media last week. More than 86 million people have watched it. The palace was allegedly financed by billionaires close to Putin. It's said to have a casino, a skating rink, and a vineyard. Thousands of people rallied for Navalny across Russia on Saturday. Navalny, 44, is Russia's most prominent opposition leader. He was jailed a week ago for 30 days, accused of parole violations. The survivor of a near-fatal nerve agent attack last August, he was arrested upon his return to Moscow from Berlin in January. The BBC reports that Putin called the palace video a compilation and montage and said he found it boring. That's it for CGN News. I'm Scott Wilson. Thanks for watching.